Ovid Scobie is bringing out a brand new book on August the 1st called Endgame. And it's all about the royal family, as you would expect, and also the monarchy's chances of survival. I hope that they actually manage to survive until the book comes out, Ovid. Now, I can't wait to review that for you, but I thought it would be fun to look at all the things he's sort of written since Finding Freedom and sort of work out what could be in this startling new book. Now, when I look back over all the things that Omer's written over the years since Finding Freedom, I can see that the book is probably going to contain quite a bit of shade thrown at Catherine. Omer doesn't seem to like Catherine for some reason. I don't know whether it's because someone in his inner sanctum also just doesn't like her, maybe someone who's very jealous and envious and is always trying to tear her down. Yes, maybe that could be it. I don't really know. But I'm going to share some of the things that he's actually said about Catherine. Some of them are laughable and some of them are actually more serious. And I want to see what you think about it. So please leave your comments down below. So one of the things that he said about Catherine was the fact that Meghan choosing not to show Archie on the day he was born made Kate look incredibly old fashioned. He said that in an interview. And I just think that is gobsmacking because Catherine always came across to me as someone who was just the modern professional woman. I mean, she used to stand on those steps after giving birth and she used to get the photos out of the way. She used to make everyone happy. She used to proudly show her post-birth body, which is, you know, fantastic. That really advances, the, takes a lot of pressure off women post-birth because she was willing to show that you don't just immediately go back to a model-like figure after giving birth. And then she would go off for her baby moon and she would do what was best for her, best for the baby, best for William, best for their whole family. And so she was just being professional and doing what needed to be done in a no fuss modern way. Now, I want to read you some th more astounding things he said about Catherine. Now, I want to read them because I want to get the quotes right. He said that Megan's progressiveness highlighted Kate's, he calls her Kate, past era persona. He said, that if Megan had have come in and been as subservient and didn't question anything, then she would have fitted into the cookie cutter duchess role. Now, presumably Catherine is the cookie cutter duchess. It's also really weird that I look back on his Twitter feed and after Catherine's marriage to William, he was still calling her Kate Middleton. And then eventually he sort of segued to Duchess Kate and then now he's calling her Princess Kate. Now, maybe my USA viewers can let me know. Is that because of the USA audience, because he appears on those morning programs in the USA? Do, do they refer to people as princess, to her as Princess Kate? Because I don't think anyone in the UK does or Australia. I think that you know, so let me know. It, it could just be Omid. It just could be Omid. But he's calling her, persists in calling her Kate. Um, and there's someone else in his sort of world that persists in calling her Kate. Who could that be? But he throws more serious shade at Catherine when he's talking about her early childhood work. And he sort of implies, well, I won't tell you, I won't blab on, I'll tell you what he says. This is, this is from his lips. He says, Catherine's early childhood campaign highlights the ineffectiveness of the royal family's charity work because she can't affect real change without stepping into policy or politics. Now that is scary and it is also displays that he doesn't understand what the royal family does and yet he's the editor-in-chief for a major magazine, a royal editor, and he doesn't understand their soft diplomacy, he doesn't understand them raising awareness of issues to throw spotlights on other people's work in order to raise funding and to highlight and progress their work. He just doesn't get it. And to suggest that you should involve yourself in policy and politics, that is the very thing the royal family will never do. And that is what is ensuring its survival. Now, I wonder who else wanted to get involved in policy and politics and couldn't stand the confines of the royal family. 
He also says he blames her in the same, this is in a magazine article, for the same lack of much needed funding in the early childhood sector. Apparently, Catherine is absolutely responsible for every failing in the early childhood sector. And he rubbishes all her efforts for several more paragraphs. And then he points out that this, her life's work, isn't worth the effort. He also has made some other astounding sort of assertions over the years. I mean, who can forget during Earthshot in Boston when the Harry and Meghan docuseries trailers dropped right in the middle of the Earthshot Prize, sort of building up to the Earthshot Prize awards ceremony. And Ovid Scobie tweeted out that if William's Earthshot Prize is the Super Bowl, then Harry and Meghan's docuseries was the halftime show. <laughs> well, in my experience, Ovid, the halftime shows have always been really good, you know, from talented people that know their stuff that have earned the right to have the halftime show after many years of hard work and talent, and they deserve their spotlight. But uh, I would put the Harry and Meghan docuseries in a different category than the Super Bowl halftime show. So as he's putting the finishing touches to his book Endgame, I guess we can expect more shade being thrown at Catherine. I guess there's going to be new startling revelations about William's temper. And I guess there's going to be leakings and briefings from Charles and Camilla. And there might even be some new astonishing things that will rock us all, that will become headlines for a few weeks. And they'll have to come from someone who's right in the inner sanctum someone right on the inside of the royal family. It might even include snippets that didn't make it in Harry's final edit of his book. Who knows? I just hope this time that in Omid Scobie's book that he correctly credits all those that helped write his book. Let me know what you think. Please like and subscribe because I've got way more viewers than I have subscribers and I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye.